The 2021 Ford F-150 is brand new for 2021, and you should see it at dealers by November. But you should also know it is the most popular selling vehicle in North America. It has been that way for decades. And now they have the power boost option. So for the very first time, Ford is going with a hybrid powertrain in the F-150. And no, the V8's not going away. Hi, my name is Eric and I make videos for car and truck enthusiasts. If that's you, hey, please consider subscribing. With the introduction of the F-150 hybrid powertrain, Ford is perhaps a little understandably nervous. So they released a video in a press release today to show us how much testing they're doing with the F-150 hybrid and letting us know that this thing is going to be super tough and super durable. That's what they want us to know. So what exactly is the power boost option? So you start with the V6, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6. Then you add an electric motor. This electric motor is integrated into the transmission and it generates 35 kilowatts of power. That's about 47 additional horsepower. Now it's a version of the 10 speed automatic transmission. That's the only transmission that you can get and it comes with a 1.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. Now the battery takes up no additional space in the cabin. It takes up no additional space in terms of the bed. So it's not taking up any extra space. And it also has a regenerative braking. So that means when you take your foot off the gas, you can recapture some of that energy and put it back into the battery. So it actually has the most torque of any of the engines available in the F-150. It has 570 pound-feet of torque. That is 70 pound-feet more than the next lower down option, which is 500, which comes the 3.5 liter without the additional electric engine. That has 400 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. With the power boost option, you get 430 horsepower and the 570 torque. The towing capacity is as high as 12,700 pounds, and it goes as low as 11,000 pounds with the 145 inch wheelbase. There's a lot of different options and configurations around surrounding the F-150, so you kind of have to choose your packages wisely. To get this highest level of towing capacity, you need to get the maximum trailer towing package as well. So Ford wants us to know that this is a really durable machine. So they took it out to the Davis Dam in the desert of Arizona, and they did a heavy duty towing test on it. They took it up an 11.4 mile slope that climbs 3,500 feet with an average grade of 6%, and they say it was 100 degrees. Today we're at Davis Dam in Arizona. It's part of the Hoover Dam system. It is a brutal 11 mile stretch up a 6% grade in the middle of the desert. Davis Dam is within the industry about the gold standard for towing. And it's one of the toughest, if not the toughest places that you can tow within the United States. We're running the F-150 Power Boost out today on the exact same test that we subject to all of our other Ford trucks. We've got over 12,000 pounds loaded up into this trailer, so the truck's gonna have to work really hard. We've got the sun beating down on us, looking at the mountain, just a steep, imposing mountain grade ahead of us. And it still has the capability to pull that up the hill. In your case you're wondering, this pretty much matches the towing capacity of the 5 liter V8. The maximum towing capacity of that is 13,000 pounds, so we're talking about just a 300 pound difference. The V8 actually is pretty much mid-range in the engine choices. It has 410 pound-feet of torque and 400 horsepower. And that's actually not as much as the V6 EcoBoost. Instead of fuel economy, Ford is actually really focusing on utility with the power boost option and they've got an onboard generator. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. But first, Ford wants to let us know that they have tested the heck out of this thing and they have actually invented tests to prove its durability. So they're testing it further than they would with the normal F-150. So it's meeting the standards of the typical F-150 in terms of their test regimen. And then they say they're taking it a notch higher. We needed to make sure that the battery was just as tough as the rest of the vehicle. And to do that, we developed a special torture test. They're really trying to make sure that people feel comfortable with the battery and that it is going to last. So this is actually my favorite part of their test regimen. 
I don't know why. So the battery test is comprised of several events that the vehicle goes over, and the table shakes exactly as if it were the vehicle driving down our road load events, our durability events. It's like a mechanical bull on steroids, really. So what that correlates to is an 82-hour duration of beating the battery, just tight torture test on the battery. And that simulates one full life of a gas F-150. I mean, when you think about it, who doesn't want a mechanical bull on steroids? Vibration testing appears to be a really important aspect of the testing at Ford, and they don't want their test engineers to test drivers to get overly vibrated, apparently. So now they've got our robot overlords who are going to do the vibration testing for us. And you know what? I'm all for it. Imagine running over bumps, potholes, over and over again for three months. And that's how we test out underbody, suspension. These tests represent 10 years of life and three months of testing. So Ford has said that they actually didn't use the test driver, that it's used, used robots for this over this incredible pothole, uh, ridiculous, tough, super tough terrain and they ran these tests for several months and they also want to let us know that they had 2100 pounds of payload when they were running these tests which is the maximum capacity of payload and just to show how this is really more about uh, utility and practicality rather than fuel economy there's an onboard generator in the f-150 which is an option in most of the trim levels but in the power boost it actually comes standard so it comes standard with a 2.4 kilowatt generator and you can get an optional 7.2 kilowatt generator which Ford says is 18 times higher than the competition and it basically converts DC power into AC power so you can use it to power tools speakers whatever you want seems like a good truck to throw a party in an ounce of peach nectar now that was just that cocktail so how much does this cost and what kind of configuration do you need to get the power boost option so you can actually configure it all the way from the base XL. Let's do it here. You do need to get the Super Crew. That is the longest uh, crew cab, obviously. I th think you can use any size box that you want. So let's just choose the smallest one. So we're starting at 36,650. I'm gonna hit the configure button and I'm gonna move right down to the powertrain. Here it is. It's the 3.5 liter power boost. So it's $4,500. So now we're up to $43,485. You can get it in uh, 4x2 or 4x4. If you want to have 4x4, that you need to change the Super Crew 4x4, so that adds $3,500. So now we're up to basically $47,000. If you want to get the additional uh, higher generator, the higher output generator, the 7.2 kilowatts, that is an additional $750. So that actually bumped me up by 920. So now we're at $48,000. So here's my question to you. Would you consider getting the power boost option? I asked Ford what their anticipated take rate is. In other words, what percentage of people do they think would be buying the power boost? And they said it was about 10% is their estimate. When is it gonna be available? They told me that production on the power boost option is gonna start in late November. So I expect it should be available at dealers just around the end of the year, something like that. You can probably just squeeze one in in 2020. I'm guessing that most of the deliveries for the Power Boost option are gonna be more available in 2021. For the rest of the 2021 F-150 line, you should be able to get them starting probably in December. What kind of fuel economy can you expect from this? So I did a little bit of calculating. They say this has a 700 mile range, which is pretty good in my books. It is a 30.6 gallon tank. So when you divide it up, it works out close to 23 miles per gallon. Certainly not absolutely incredible, but for a vehicle that can tow this much and have this much capacity, that's actually, that's actually pretty good. So you got to decide with your $4,500 if you want to spend it, uh, is that really going to make it up in fuel savings over the course of your ownership of the truck? Mm, sort of depends. My guess is it's probably going to take a few years to make it back, but you are getting increased utility. You're getting a lot of towing capacity and you're getting this additional 
built-in generator. So we know that Ford is really counting on the F-150 to get the launch right. They've been working on it for quite a while. This is obviously their biggest moneymaker. It is the biggest selling vehicle in the US. I said that it's been going on for decades now and Ford wants to get this right. So I saw this article that says basically the UAW, Ford is asking the UAW to have members stand by at one of their plants just in case there's any kind of issues with the rollout. And if there are, these guys are ready to jump in and sort of take care of any issues. Now, CEO, the brand new CEO at Ford, Jim Farley said that the F series is the company's top priority. They don't expect any issues. And I, you know, they had no comment on this article, but clearly it's a pretty good move for them to have people standing by. They really wanna get this right. This is very important to Ford. Ford has got the Bronco launch coming up right now. They've got the launch of the F-150. So these are like two massive launches going on at essentially the same time frame. This is a big deal for Ford. This is like a big moment for Ford right now. So I hope they're gonna get it right. I think they're gonna try really hard. The new CEO has got some, he's already made some sweeping changes within the company. It's pretty interesting. So in terms of the management, at least, I am not gonna get into that in this video. My name is Eric. If you would like to see more content like this, please let me know. There's two videos up on screen right now, and I will see you tomorrow.